Is for Allah, nothing but Allah. Ba is the beginning of Bismillah. Ta is for Taqwa, be wearing of Allah. And Tha is for Thawab, a reward. Ja is for Jannah, the garden of paradise. Ha is for Hajj, the blessed pilgrimage. Kha is for Khatim, the seal of the prophethood given to the Prophet. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to our program Learning Arabic We were discussing in the last episode how can you write this alphabet and today we're going to discuss more about uh, the features that should be used in order to write this alphabet correctly and perfectly. I'm joined as always uh, with Mohammed from Nigeria, Khaled from Ghana, and Mohammed from England, Usama from Egypt. Welcome to all of you. Do you have any comment? Here is my first question. Do you have any comments for writing this alphabet? Did you find any difficulty? Please yeah, go ahead um, and come. Uh, my question is um, yeah. when you write ha separately, yep. um, we, d we d uh, said in our last show, how do you write it? Yep. Um, we did a little talk about the middle position and the last position and the starting position when you join in it. Yep. But I would like to see more and sure. Know, okay. Try, well, out, try as well. How do right. you make drawing? Okay. So please focus. Uh, pay your attention to me. Here is that. When it comes to ha, I think that is here again. So I would start with a very small hook in this way, and we are making a line, a straight line down, and then we are making another line down the line. So we would suppose that there is a line here. Can you see that? This is a line uh, uh, in which I can write all the alphabets uh, on it. And then we are making another half circle here in this way. Okay, that's called the tail of the letter. I'm sorry for that. Um, uh, so this is called ha. So I would suppose that there is a line here. And what I'm making now is that, that there is a small hook I'm making down here. And then I'm making a very probably long tail. If you ask me how size is it? Do, do we sh uh, should we make that in uh, a big oh, yeah. size or in uh, a small size? I think it's up to the uh, the format, uh, or probably it's up to you. I mean, maybe how much space do you have? Exactly, it depends on the papers oh, that you have. Oh. So um, let me just move on here to the slides, and we were discussing more about yes. Here is that. Here is the word in Arabic, which is uh, when it comes in the initial position. Here is it. We begin with a very small hook in this way. We are going here down, and then we are making a straight line in order to connect this alphabet with the following one. Here is it. Now, we write ma, and after ma a, which is alif, I think that we discussed yeah. that before. Here it comes in the middle position, and it comes connected with the previous alphabet. Then we are making a separate or an independent uh, ra. I've we we I've gonna discuss I've more about that. I've seen some people, when they connect the hand with meme, they yep. put a little extra uh, line as well be before the meme. Here is that. Mm, yeah, yeah. Is that what you want to say, Mohammed? Here is that. So we make ha and then we are make something like that? Or something like that, probably? Mm -hmm. no, no, just before the meme, just a little hook. Okay. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, hook in this way. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, that's probably may not be found in Arabic, mm -hmm. um, especially when it comes to ha. Well, you can find hook, for example, when it comes to sa or sa. We can discuss more about that in the following episodes. But for ha, we don't have any hook. Uh -huh. And when you connect this alphabet with the following one. So probably I might ask you once again, please, if you can write this uh, sound here, this letter here in this way. Can you follow me writing that? Here is that. Yeah. Please, go ahead. Here is that. So can you write, please, that? Uh, I would like just to see how can you write this. Yeah. Okay, so again. Exactly, exactly. So perfect. I think that's perfect. Muhammad, please show me. Show me what did you write. Oh, well, that sounds great. Okay. That is awesome, and that is very interesting again. So that's about how. Yeah. Ahmed, yeah. I, about the, the initial position. Okay. I see in the newspapers, especially, especially in the English newspapers, yep. that they have a tendency to begin a paragraph with a capitalized letter, the big size. I think Osama. Um, and do we have such thing in Arabic? Uh, I think Osama. Here is the point. Uh, generally speaking, we don't have. As you know, that if you like to start any sentence in English, the first thing you have to do is just to make a capitalized letter at yeah. the beginning of the sentence. That's probably may not be found in Arabic. But in Arabic, they are making something else. Probably they are just trying to enlarge the size of the alphabet in order to show that we are starting here with the... I think uh, yeah. the, the English, the, the, the first letter is capital because of the grammatical reason, because you have to have a grammar. But in Arabic, we don't have such a reason. Exactly. Now we could, uh, you, the, uh, in, uh, in English, we have sometimes, we do have certain words to start a sentence. Yep. But in Arabic, you could just pick any letter and, you exactly. know, and write. Yeah. You don't right. have to make capital or, you know, 
that's right. not the case in that well, I think that's another interesting point because if you just finish the first sentence in any newspaper then if you just uh, look at the finishing or the ending point of the sentence if you just look at uh, the following uh, letter which probably comes at the beginning of any sentence you can find that the letter is written in a normal way we don't have any capitalized uh, letter and that's why Generally speaking, we say that we don't have any capitalized or we don't have any capital alphabets in Arabic. Mm. Uh, all of them actually are written in the same form. But probably you can find that the kind of big size of the alphabets when it comes in uh, probably at the beginning of any article. Yeah, normally, you see, like yeah. you see, uh, normally you see a capital yeah, uh, very exactly. big yeah, and then small writing. Mm. In right, sounds like yeah. that. Okay. So generally speaking, when we, when we talk about how, when it comes to initial position, it's always a connecting What about the last segment. position? Um, when it comes in well, the when it comes to initial in, in the final or in the middle position, we can know more about that, Muhammad. Here, the, uh, here, ha is coming in the medial position, and if you can't see that, it comes connected. So that yeah. means that let me just write uh, this word once again. It's called uh, taht, which means below. That's probably the adverb um, in English. So if you can. Uh, okay. Say it again. The right pronunciation is taht. Taht. Right. Tahat. So don't say taht. You know what the difference between taht and taht? You raised a very interesting point because when you say tahat, here you are, you are putting a vowel which is probably called fatha. So you are making tahat. Can you see that? Uh. But if you just say tahat, you are making sukun. You don't uh. pronounce that at all. We don't have any vowel. By the way, very interesting point here that you can find. Uh, we will discuss more about the vowels in Arabic, especially that kind of implicit vowels, which is called a tashkil. Yeah. Um, so stuff like that probably. Uh, uh, makes sense in pronouncing some words in, in Arabic language. So let me just move on here to the whiteboard. So when we say taht, here is that. So we discussed before ta, the two dots here be, um, above the letter, yeah. and then we have ha. Here ha is coming in the medial position. And what we do after that is that the ta comes in the final position. Uh, well, I'm not actually focusing on the first uh, alphabet or the final one. What I'm focusing on is that kind of alphabet. Can you see that? So ha here actually comes in the um, uh, in the medial position connecting with the previous and the following one. Can you write that, please? Please, I would write that again. Here is it. Ha. And Do you have to write the full word? Yep, yeah, please. If you can write the full will, word, that will be perfect. Okay, here is that. So, ha. What I'm making here is that, putting two dots here for tan, two dots here for another tan, mm. and for ha, it comes here with a very small hook. Then we are going down, and then we are making a straight line. Please show me that as hell. I know it's okay. Okay, well, that sounds great. Okay, Muhammad, Thank well, you. perfect. You. And uh, Muhammad, great, Khaled. Okay, excellent. So here is the point. When it comes again in the middle position, it's a called a connector or probably a yeah. uh, connecting segment. Yeah. Yeah. It's connected with the previous uh, is it, letter. Is it like English when you use words like and and between? Is and and between. Because um, uh, they're connecting uh, another sentence to it. Well, probably, Muhammad, I don't want to make here, in, in, especially in this point, I don't want to make any kind of comparison between English and Arabic because, generally speaking, one of the common features that can be found in Arabic is that most of the alphabets are connected together. Yeah. Right. That's but right. in English, a lot, oh, uh, I would say that it's very common in English that you can find a lot of disconnected, disconnected letters, letters, especially when it comes to the typewriting style, stuff like that. You can probably connect them if you're just writing that by your hands, but when no, it comes... No, I mean yeah. connection by using, for example, using between. That's not a connection. I'm not, I'm not saying that uh, um, connection. I, I think that's probably may not be found, uh, but it could be actually. We can find a lot of examples in the following um, uh, slides. Here is that. Um, final position. Sometimes connected like malh, which means salt, and sometimes it's connected like nibah or uh, sabah. Let me just try that again. So here is that. When it comes to, for example, uh, the word malh, which means in English salt, here is that. We're going to discuss more about man the following episodes. Here we have lamb. And that is my point for ha. ha yeah. Here is that. Can you see that? <coughs> so it's basically yeah. same as jim. Exactly, yeah. but we don't have that, of course. I have no, Muhammad. Yes, uh, when you're writing the meme, uh, no, you could put the circle below or above. Is this well? A, is this? Below uh, I, th I think that's below actually. Uh, uh, but that is for meme. You are talking about yeah, meme, yeah. right? Okay. But uh, is it okay putting it above? Uh, I, I think that is, if you like to write a perfect meme, I think what we are making here is that you are making a kind of very closed circle, yes. and you put that actually down the line. I mm -hmm. mean, if you can find the line mm -hmm. here, so in this way, this is the line, for example, in the paper, and then you are making the meme here in this way. You are making a kind of closed circle, and then you are making a kind of straight line, connecting that actually with the lamp, and then it comes to a at the end. Okay, but this is probably... Uh, 
how when it comes in the final position, sometimes connected, and sometimes also it comes disconnected, like what we might have here, which is called nibah, which means in, in English, barking, or sabah, which yeah. means uh, morning. Let me just repeat that again. Here is it. I can write that here again. And please, follow me in writing this word. Please, if you can write the whole word, I would appreciate that. Here is it, sabah. Can you see that? So here, in this word, actually, it comes disconnected. Okay, I want to please show me how can you write that. Yeah, oh, yeah, as okay. always, Osama is a perfect, yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. Well, excellent, Osama. Had yeah, it, please. Yeah. Exactly. So my focus here on, uh, please, Muhammad, yeah, here is that. Okay, Muhammad, excellent, okay. So here is the point. Um, when it comes in final position, always disconnected. Yeah, and sometimes it comes connected like, um, like Mal. Mal. Now, I can tell you here that we have four shapes for writing uh, this uh, letter. <coughs> here is the first one, when it comes here, when it comes, as, as always, in the, in the initial position, it's always connecting with the following letters. Here is that, for okay. example. So we have the independent shape for ha. Here is this. Okay. So when it comes in the initial position, here is that. Please, can you write that with me? Yeah. Yep. Can we get ha in uh, in maybe in last or middle or starting position with alif with the ha alif slider? Ha. It's called ha in this way. Yep. Yeah. Here is it. That's is it possible? Want. Right. But exactly. Sound, but yeah. again, this is the sound. The sound. Uh -huh. This is not the letter. Yeah. Okay. When it comes to the letters that we are writing, that according to the position inside the word. Can you see that? Okay. So this is when it comes in the initial position. When it comes in initial position, here is it. Can you write that with me, please? Yeah. Here is it. So we are making a, ver uh, a kind of very short line in order to connect this alphabet with the following one. And when it comes in the, uh, so this is probably in the medial position, and this is in the initial position, and in the final position here, we have two forms again. The first one is that. We start with a very small hook going down, and we are making a tail. Here is that. Without any dot, please. Okay, this is probably the first form in the final position. And the second form, so I think that you have something in your mind. No, Ahmad, I, I'm asking about yep. the, the way we organize letters, the way we, we write letters yep. following each other. Yep. Because you are imagining a line yep. to write, or, uh, or to write the, 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 the letter or to write the word. Yep. What, does, what, what is the effect of that? Well, actually, Osama, that's a very important question because you know what? If you just don't make a kind of um, connection, that's why we are now learning something which is, when it comes, this letter, for example, when it comes in the middle position, it should be connected. When I say connecting, that means that we should have a kind of, we should have a kind of very short line to connect this alphabet with the previous one or probably the following one. Yeah. Connecting here means, actually, that we should have a kind of connection. And that connection probably could be a kind of very short line. Here is this way, Sam. Can you see that? Here is it. In this way and in this way. Can you see that? Okay. So if I can say, for example, more about malh in the final position, can you see that? Here is that. So can you see that kind of short line, Usam? And probably I can understand your point. You would like to say, for example, how about Ahmed, if you can just connect la with ha automatically here in this way? I think, Usam, in this way, actually, we have to learn that if you would like to connect any alphabet with the previous alphabets or the following one, I think we should have a kind of very short line in order to connect both of them actually. And I think that's very important again um, uh, for most of the Arabic alphabets, w uh, uh, the way to connect the alphabets with the uh, previous alphabets with and the following one, the we following. should have that kind of short lines. So I think that we can discuss more about that. My dear viewers, we're going to have a break. We will be right back. Stay tuned. <laughs> The second rule of al mim as sakina that is the letter mim. So if the first mim is non-vowel or sakina, followed by a vowel mim. So I will merge the first in the letter and I will pronounce them as one. Wa min, and we spoke abundantly on the virtues of seek refuge with Allah from the outcast Satan, especially for the first reciter. He's got to recite it out loud. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فإذا جاءت الصاخة وإذا النفوذ زوجت Make sure it's ضمة وإذا النو وإذا النفوس Thank you for joining us Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the second part of our episode, Learn Arabic. We were discussing in the previous uh, part, how can we pronounce and write uh, the Arabic alphabet Ha. And I think that is after Ha, it's very important again to mention that we have a, a certain type of classifications for the Arabic alphabets. We have, for example, Ba, Ta, Tha. And in Arabic also we have Jim, Ha, and Kha. Um I think that is Ha probably... Uh, could be also very distinctive sound um, when it comes in comparison with different languages. But I think, I still remember that in German language, or probably in Russian, we have Kha. Yeah, right? th that's well, that's right. And uh, I think, Ahmed, that the most important and the most difficult um, letter or alphabet for those who wanted to learn Arabic is the sound Ha. ha. And I have a story, Ahmed, yep. Please. about that. Uh, when there was round uh, was was roving around the downtown okay and i met two people two guys that they were lost they were wanted to 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 head to at the Hill square okay i asked them that is in downtown in cairo in downtown okay. yeah okay so i asked him what do you want he said to me where is tahir street so say, say I asked again. Him, sorry what do you want where is tahir street so so he get he he get confused, Ahmed, and and become angry. <laughs> it is Tahrir, it is Tahrir. So I got it. Yeah, I got it. It is Tahrir. We say Tahrir. Okay. <laughs> so, Tahrir. So it leads to miscommunication between people, and it's a very see. difficult sound, I, I think, than Kha, because as you have said, that Kha may be found in German and another uh, other languages. Right. Okay. Right. So that is the the, right. the, 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 the very and important sound we have all to learn. Yeah, I, I agree with you. By the way, Sam, I think that is. When it comes to Kha, can you, can you repeat it? Kha. 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 Right. Did, do you feel something probably could be different from I think I've yep. noticed in Maso, when I have short throat, yep. it's easier for me to pronounce Kha because it just comes out automatically. Yeah. You have this problem here in short throat, it just comes out automatically. Exactly. And while you don't have short throat, it's difficult to pronounce it. And yeah. when you have short throat, it's difficult to pronounce different words such as Ain and it comes from different parts of your throat. Right. That's the yeah. Kha is very easy when you have sore throat problem, when you have coughing and you know, I you see. cold. So you want to say that Kha probably could be easier than Ha? Yeah, yeah. I'll say so. You yeah. think so? Yeah. yeah. I think Kha uh, is deeper is. in the mouth, Ahmed, than Kha. Uh, I see. It's I deeper. See. It's so can you repeat both actually? Ha. 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 Can you see that? Uh, again. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. Right. Well, what I think that is, I can feel <coughs> something probably could be also very important. When we produce ha, we have the final part of the soft palate actually probably could be very close or touches the back part of the... Probably uh, it, it also gets sometimes slightly dried as dry as when you say ha. Exactly. And, and uh, if you notice, if you say ha and after the ha, yep. you might just reduce the ha thing in, in ha. Right. You, after ha, it just got less what actually is supposed to come out of your mouth. Exactly. So if you see some people reciting the Quran, they will say they reduce the the actual voice of ha to yep. ha, ha just just slightly inch less probably to to go fluently. Right. Mm, yeah. yeah. Fluently. Right. No, I, no, I, I, I I've noticed that. Not I think that's absolutely correct. And you know what's the difference between ha and ha when it comes in the writing system? It's just only one dot. One dot. Yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, if you just put one dot above the letter, uh, you will completely change the letter. And uh, but it's not just about writing. Also, when it comes to pronunciation, can you see ha? Uh, I can feel that there is no. Uh, I would say there is no kind of connection between tongue and the oral. Uh, yeah. cavity. I don't have any kind of touches, for example, between the tip of the tongue with the alveolar. It's not like that. Probably, yeah. Yeah. probably more, so. more vibrating. Probably so. Exactly. Uh, it's not like that. Yeah. And um, I was actually, by the way, Kha um, probably is not found in English, but in some dialects in English, like for example, I still remember a friend of mine who lived in uh, Scotland. 
uh, told me before that even in Scottish dialect, you can find kha. Uh, I don't know whether that's correct or not, but uh, uh, this is my first time actually to know. I thought that kha probably could be the only alphabet or the only sound that can be found in Arabic. But uh, I found I that it can be... You do, you, I think you, you might do in German, but definitely you have in Urdu. In Urdu? Yeah, yeah, Def- but you oh. do, I think you might have in German. I okay. Was, I, I think so, I'm not really sure. Yep, and it's also found in Russian language, by the way. Mm-hmm. I found a lot of Russians also uh, pronounce uh, this sound saying Kha. And you said now it's found in Urdu. It could be also found in a lot of um, Semitic languages, like uh, Persian, like mm-hmm. uh, Hebrew, like... Yeah. Um, Indian or Hindi language, something like that. So let me just read the slides here. It says that the letter Kha represents a sound that's pronounced deep in the throat, probably could be close in a certain way. For Ha, it has no equivalent in English. I think that but probably can be found in the Scottish dialects or yeah. Irish dialects, something like that. In pronouncing the sound, we should exert more muscle efforts as it is an emphatic sound. So that means <coughs> actually, I can tell you here something that is Ha, Ha, are emphatic sounds. We do have also Ayn, we have also Ta, ta and Ayn, Va, Rain. You know what? Uh, but probably Ta also can be confusing when it comes to in comparison with Ta. I don't know whether uh, a lot of people can distinguish, but we can discuss more about that when it comes to the alphabet Ta. Anyway, um, the voicing status. Here's, uh, here's very important actually to mention um, that is Kha is a voiceless sound. I think that is quite important. Mm. And as we used to do, what we have to do now is to put our hand here at our Adam's apple, yeah. and then you can find. <laughs> no, don't say ha, <laughs> because if you say ha, then you are pronouncing a certain type of vowel. A vowel, yeah. yeah. And in this way, you're gonna find that this vowel is voiced, mm. yeah. which is a common feature for a lot of vowels. Ha. Yes. Vowel, right? So say ha, <laughs> ha, <laughs> yeah, ha. <laughs> can you see that? Yeah, there is so no vibration. No vibration, uh-huh. yes, right. at all. So that means probably that could be closed. I do get some kind of No, 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 please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it could be something like that. If you just, you know, Mohammed, I want to tell you something. If you combine kha, if you say, for example, kha in this way, let me just repeat, write that here. If you just write that saying kha um, in this way, Kha, <coughs> can you see that? Yeah. Mm. And then we put Aleph. So that is Kha. Uh, we discussed before that probably um, Aleph is a vowel. Mm. Right. Yeah. So without Aleph, you shouldn't get no vibration. So, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, without vowel, what you can do is that just to say, because here you're not, oh. just, you're not just reading two, uh, two uh, sounds, yes, you're sound. just trying to pronounce just one sound. So you say Kha. <coughs> Huh. Right, exactly. So there is no way any kind of vibration that can be found in producing this sound. But that's about the voicing sets. Let me just move on here to the place of articulation, which is described uvular. Yeah. I think that is the word uvular could be uh, confusing for a lot of normal peoples. But for those who are very interested in linguistics like me and Osama, yeah. I think that we can uh, understand what the meaning of uvular. Uh, let me just explain that um, on the slides. Here is that. Please uh, pay your attention to me here. Can you see that? Yeah. That is the tongue. Okay. Here we have actually uh, the upper palate. And what we might have here in this part is called soft palate. Here in this part. Yeah. Okay. But uvular probably is the final part of the soft palate. Can you see this? Yeah. And I think that is also important to mention that you can find also other sounds in Arabic that can be pronounced in the same position. Like, can you remind me, Sama? I can tell you here something. Ka. Uh, yeah, ka. Ka, it's right. Ka, yeah. So can you, can, you, can you pronounce it again? Ka. 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 Okay, so that is ka. ka. And yeah. we have also ka. 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 Yeah. ka. So both of them have the same place of articulation, which is yovular. So yeah. I can say confidently that is ha is a voiceless, and also it's produced by the yovular part of yeah. What do they call the, the yeah. velum? They call it oh, the, yeah. I think that is, well, sometimes, yes, it's called velum, Sam. But um, I think we said that the velum is responsible for producing cap. Cap, yeah. 
Okay, yeah. Right. yeah. And I think that yeah, VLM, by the way, could be equivalent to the softer palette, but in the softer palette also we have parts, as you know. Well, yeah. Uh, in tongue we have in also parts. We, have, we parts. have tab, we have the front, we have the middle, we have the back. In the palette we have the hard palette, we have yeah, soft, palette. soft palette, and in the soft palette we have the VLM, we have Yovler. It's a kind of classification. So, uh, Ahmed, I yeah. think that ordinary people may find difficulty in understanding such concepts and chat and such um, difficult to linguistic terms. Right, so right. I, the only way I find that, yeah, tell and me even when I when I learn English, that yeah. is to practice and just to listen. Exactly. exactly. No, effort, no effort in listening. Exactly. I think that's absolutely correct. But here the point, Osama, that I would like to explain, which is, uh, how about those who cannot imitate your, your pronunciation? Yeah. So sometimes it requires a certain part of description Hmm. So you have to make a kind of very simple description. Maybe, in order to may, yep. maybe when you listen to English, you yeah. sh maybe you shouldn't imitate. If you can't do it, you don't do it. You have your own accent. Everyone speaks their own accent. Sometimes it's, if you see your people in Scotland, they'll be different from people living in, in London or maybe in America. Right. So you, maybe in Egypt they have different accent. You stick with the accent or you try to learn English, try to learn right. the context. Right. Yeah, no, no one, you know, we, we're not telling you to speak same as American, speak same as British. Mm. You can have your own, you know, uh, accent and you like, like just like okay. an Arabic, just like an Arabic. Right. The, um, you know, the Egyptians are different, the Saudis are different, the, the uh, uh, even dialects and the yeah, uh, different. The exactly, so you have a comment. Yeah, yep, I, I, I find that you have to stick to, 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 to one dialect and hmm. do not be confused about the other dialects. Just learn. Even Osama, if we have a lot of Arabic dialects today? Yeah. I okay. think that we have, we have Morocco, we have Iraqi, we have we have Saudi, we have many many dialects. That, but I, I think that we have not uh, we do not mo we do not want to exert much time in in, in boggling our mind or conjuring our mind. What accent I'm going to learn? Just to stick to the Egyptian or to what do you what do you feel comfort uh, regarding it? Okay, mm. so get down and 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 and, and try Think. to have a fixed time to listen to and to write. Okay, and to imitate. And if, even if you have the, 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 the possibility of speaking with someone who has a, 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 a linguistic knowledge about Arabic, yeah, it would be well, it would hmm. be very good, okay? In my opinion, I think you should learn the, the Arabic that is in Quran, the first Arabic, because the, oh, everyone understands Arabic all yep. over the world. Yeah. And some people might not understand the Egyptian, or the Moroccan, or the Syrian, or the Tunisian, or the you know, diff Iraqi, but they will understand the Fusa. You should concentrate on Fusa and, you know, stick to that one. Right, right. Mm -hmm. well, I think that I agree with both of you actually when it comes to different dialects. You can find a lot of dialects but it depends on what kind of dialect you feel comfortable with, yes. what kind of uh, dialects that you would be able <coughs> to imitate and probably to pronounce it perfectly. I think that we can discover more about dialects. Well, I'm sorry, Sam, I'm sorry, Mohammed, I'm sorry, okay. all my guests today. I think that is time is always running out of our control. My dear viewers, ladies and gentlemen, I think that we can discover more about uh, the Arabic alphabets in the upcoming episodes. Please, if you have any comments, send me an email to brave, B-R-A-V-E, 107 at yahoo.com. And I think that we can also discuss more about how can we write and pronounce the Arabic alphabets. Thank you for joining us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A is for Allah, nothing but Allah Ba is the beginning of Bismillah Ta is for Taqwa, bewaring of Allah And Tha is for Thawab, a reward Ja is for Jannah, the garden of paradise Ha is for Hajj, the blessed pilgrimage Kha is for Khatam, the seal of the prophethood given to the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam